Sergeant Pear here with another how to. Today, Will wants to know how to cook. Seeing as it's Thanksgiving, I think that sounds like a great idea, Pilgrim. <laughs> yeah, you John Wayne could use some work, dude. Yeah. Step one for cooking, get all your pots, pans, and utensils ready. Check the recipe to see how hot to preheat your oven, Pilgrim. Absolutely terrible. Not even close, dude. Pilgrim. No. Pilgrim. Stop, Pilgrim. Wow. Okay, that one was actually kind of close. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah. Step two, we're cooking. Do not use any food. Well, no food? What are they supposed to cook? Well, I don't care, but it better not be me or any of my friends. Orange, that's what cooking is. It's the preparation of food to be eaten. Oh, but yeah, that reminds me. Step three, you must use food in your cooking. Do not eat it. Then why even bother cooking it? Another great point, Pear. Cooking sounds like a real waste of time. It's probably best if nobody cooks at all. <laughs> okay, okay. Face it, Orange. People have to eat food in order to survive. Food is going to get eaten one way or the other. Oh, we'll see about that. Back! Back, Betsy! I'm warning you! What? So you're, you're going to save food lives by blowing us all up? I guess you're right. I was wrong. I'll stop. Go ahead and cook food. I won't stand in your way. Thank you. Step four. When you place food such as turkey in the oven... Make sure you secretly stack TNT inside of it! <laughs> wants to know how to make McDonald's fries. Take it away, Orange. Thanks, Bear. So it sounds easy, but it's not. McDonald's fries are like no other fries on the planet. Well, I heard they've got their secret recipe locked away in a super high-tech vault. So step one is to plan and implement an intricate heist to open the vault and retrieve the recipe without being detected. It won't be easy, though. They've got pressure-sensitive floors, run on McDonald's, and Christmas card in the entrance. And hamburglers on the roof. And I'm going to stop you right there. Really, dude? Lasers? Ropes? The Hamburglar? It's a very important recipe, Pear. Uh, why can't you just give the people a recipe for fries and call it a day? Because those fries won't be the same, Pear. Everybody knows McDonald's fries are better than normal fries. You can't fake that kind of thing. You need the actual recipe. You can't fake it, Pear. You need the real thing. Why would you blame me? Okay, fine. So assuming people aren't going to be able to steal the recipe from a high-tech facility, what should they do instead? Oh, now we're talking. If step one fails, move on to step two. Plan and implement an intricate heist to steal actual McDonald's fries without being detected. Now, McDonald's fries are kept in a high-tech facility, though, so be careful. You'll have to get past the laser grid, the fry guys guard the entrance, and everyone puts on the roof. Hey, all right, that's enough. Orange, why do people need to steal McDonald's fries when they can just buy them? Ah, oh, well, that would make more sense. And fries are cheaper than buying laser-guided mirrors and stuff. Great, glad we settled it. A step one of one, buy fries like any normal person would. We all good here? I don't know. I just feel like it was too easy. What do you mean? <gasps> oh, no. We forgot about the hamburger on the roof. What, 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 what the heck is happening? Here, take this. Give up that back to you, bitch. Pull up the kitchen. Uh, but... Just do it. Ah! Okay. All right. Sorry, Orange, but I will not be blowing up the kitchen today. I will, however, be chowing down on this spread. Ow. Okay, you're 
you're right, you're right. I'm sorry. I jumped to conclusions. Apology accepted. Thank you. Besides, I mean, if I'm going to make a TNT sandwich, it's going to have two sticks of TNT on the outside instead of bread. Progress, see? What? <laughs> hey, yo, with a to Bear and I are back with a downright diggity delish episode of How To. That's right, because this week, Narwhal29 wants to know how to order food from a restaurant. Which is a great question. There's actually a fancy new restaurant I've been dying to try. La Petty Teat Bagley the Blue? Not even close, dude. La Plagley Plagley the Black the Blue? No. <laughs> All right, step one. Look over the menu. Duck of the Orange. Will do. <laughs> Whoa. Thanks for the heads up, menu. This little orange duck's just in time. <laughs> uh, you're not going to ruin this fancy dinner for me, orange. Now then. Hmm. This all looks so delicious. Maybe we should try the... Come on! Bring me your finest flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> Orange, this is a French restaurant. Oh, my bad. I'll have Le Flambe hot Cheetos. <laughs> oh. You know, because Flambe means they light it on fire. I know what it means. Can we please get back on track? Good idea. Let's get back on Le Track. <laughs> oh. Step two. Tell your server what you'd like using the magic word. Abracadabra and your food will magically appear and it'll be time to jab out on some mad Cheetos, yo! Orange! Cheetos, 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 Cheetos! 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 My mouth is burning! Yeah, because you ordered a huge pile of flaming hot Cheetos, dude! Ah! My mouth is flambe! My mouth is flambe! Good! Now will you drink some water and tell the waiter your order? Okay, okay, sorry! Okay, I'll have the flambe. Orange, flambe just means they light it on fire. You have to tell them which dish gets flambe. Oh, gotcha. Okay, I'll have the duck a la orange then. A flambe? Seafood play. Right away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've got the duck a la orange flambe. Yep, that's what I want. No, duck a la orange flambe. Huh? What? Hope you're getting ready to gobble, gobble, gobble up a bunch of food. <laughs> to help you do it, today Orange and I are going to show you how to cook a turkey. Well, that's easy. Step one, stick a thermometer up its butt. Uh, what? Oh, yeah. I hear about it all the time. If you want to cook a turkey, you got to stick a thermometer up its butt. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Turkey. This has to be done. Orange. Hey, hey, you get back here. Orange, <laughs> leave that poor turkey alone and no butts about it. I'll say. No thermometers about it either, apparently. <laughs> Thanks, Turkey. He got my job. Uh, actual step one, preheat the oven. You see, it's very important to get the temperature in your oven just right. So to get an accurate temperature, you're going to want to stick a thermometer up the oven's butt. <laughs> no. Hey, hey, get back here. This is for your own good. <laughs> hey, hey, orange, orange. Even if ovens had butts, which they don't, they have dials to help you set the temperature. Ooh, crafty. You got up easy bake this time, oven. <laughs> All right, step two. Baste the turkey. This helps keep the meat juicy. Oh, this is my favorite part. Hold still, turkey. Hey, hey, let me baste you. Hey, you baste the turkey in the oven, dude. The one in the oven doesn't run around as much. Oh, you're right. That is easier. Thanks for the juicy tip, Bear. <laughs> uh, well, here we are. You want to take step three, dude? <gasps> you mean it? Well, I know you're dying to say it, so just do it. Woohoo! Step three, stick a thermometer up its butt. <laughs> wow. All right, it's true. You can stick it somewhere else, though, if you want. And I most certainly do not want. <laughs> but it's important to make sure that the meat reaches the right temperature before moving on to step four. Carve the turkey. I carved mine out of maple. I don't know if I like it. My turkey feels a little wooden. <laughs> Not that kind of carving, dude. This kind of carving. Happy Thanksgiving! Aw, thanks, Bear. Happy Thanksgiving to you, too. In fact, I got you a gift. Thanksgiving? I didn't know people gave gifts for Thanksgiving. Well, I do. Hey, this super long gift isn't TNT, is it? Nope, I promise. My gift is something much more from the bottom of my heart. What the? A thermometer? <laughs> hey, <laughs> uh, hey, stay away from me! No! I'm Bear, and this is my co-host, Orange. And I'm your my co-host. Doesn't matter.
matter, dude? The channel's not called the Boring Pear. It's called the Amazing Orange. I hate to break it to you, dude, but it's not called the Amazing Orange. You, what you talking about? What else would it be called? It's called... A, okay, listen, can we just put a pin in this? Sure thing, co-host. Let's check out today's prompt, which I also put a pin in. <laughs> R-R, very funny. This week, James Meza wants to know how to make a pizza. Woohoo! This is great! I love pizza! Oh, you do? Huh? Orange. I had no idea. I was hooked to have a thing of a passion, so I always assumed you didn't have a thing for me. Um, I was just saying that I love the pizza. Yes, I heard of you. And now that you're so bravely put your feelings out in the open, I can finally be open about the mind. I love you too, Orange. I'll always love it to you. with you preoccupied? Yeah! Later, dude. Have fun. Ha. All right, step one for making a pizza. Toss the dough, then put on toppings. My personal favorite is pineapple. Did I? Uh, I like you, too. Oh, I've been waiting so long to hear you say those words. Oh, ah, oh, 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 a little help here, Orange. I'm a big busy bear. Would you say you think ovens are super hot? Because um, I just so happen to think tiny fruits are super hot. <laughs> He's asking for a little help. Rich, looks like it's grapefruit time to shine. Picking up where they left off. The three is to cut the pizza into slices. <clears throat> I absolutely love slices of pizza. I said I absolutely love slices of pizza! Huh, okay. Well, I also love pretty much every pizza topping out there. I love mushrooms, I love sausage, I love olives, I love pepperoni. I know it's an atypical pizza topping, but I love passion fruit! 